Conservation Board. This is our meeting for March 9th, 2021. I'm Dennis Adams, Chair. And here tonight, we have Karen Berger, who is our Vice Chair, Rick DiStefano, our Secretary. I don't see Christine Corrado tonight. Susan Riblett, Mitchell Nellis, George Smith and David Brighton, all conservation board members. And uh, perhaps uh, Christine will join us later. All right. Um, do we have a public forum tonight? Do we have uh, any visitors who want to say something? All right. All right. No? Uh, I will call then for approval of the minutes from the February 9th meeting. Do, uh, are we all in favor of that? All right, thank you. Um, I see we have potential tree removals we'll deal with later. Do we have any presentations which need to be done before the project? I don't believe so. All right, so um, who is here to uh, represent uh, for the uh, Baptist Bible Temple conversion and for the Monroe Avenue gas station? Um, why don't we start with the Bible, uh, the, the, excuse me, the Baptist Temple right. at 1075 Great. Clover Street. Brett, if you could let in John August and Marathon Engineering. Rick, they're here. Yeah, I've asked them to uh, start their video and audio, so just one moment. Okay. Good evening, folks. Matt Tomlinson, Marathon Engineering, and uh, John August is on as well. All right. Good evening. Rick, I don't know if you have uh, the current plan that can be shown, or I have some plans that could be shown, or I can just describe the changes, whatever your preference is. Yes, Brett, could you put that up for us, please? Yes. Give us one second. Nope, that's uh, that's the Monroe Avenue one. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Oh, oh, there you go. There we Keep go. Going down into. Uh, Right there. Oh, go up one one page. All right, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Rick. So I, this is the uh, the older plan or the plan that you folks have previously seen that showed a 10,000 square foot addition, which I can talk to real quick just so you folks know the changes. So we were previously proposing a 10,000 square foot building addition, some parking out near uh, Clover Street along the front entrance, as well as the expansion of the parking lot to accommodate the additional square footage that we were proposing. We were, uh, as part of this plan, we were removing a couple of the trees or proposing to remove a couple of the trees. And this board reviewed this plan, I wanna say about four or five months ago, Rick, and um, didn't have much in the way of comments at that time. Subsequent to us appearing uh, before you folks with this plan, we've had quite a bit of dialogue with the neighbors. Uh, some neighbors uh, had some comments, some concerns relative to increased traffic. We prepared a traffic impact study and submitted that to the state and county DOT. And as a result of some of those meetings, we have scaled this plan back. And I don't know if the newer plan can be shown or not, but um, I can describe it from this plan if that's simplest. Hang on one second, uh, Matt. Uh, Brett, do you have that newer plan that I sent over to you? If not, if uh, I could share my screen and I can bring it up. Brett? Um, I, would have I only that. have... That got sent over to you uh, late last week. That email I sent to you. But if you if I can share my screen and I can bring it up. Yep. Okay. Let me get that. All right. 
And what drawing we'll be looking at for this one? Basically, the uh, be like the same thing. Yeah, second second down from the cover sheet. The layout plan. Okay. Yep. There you go. Yeah, great. Thank you. So on this plan, as you can see, the proposed parking in the rear playground area has been removed. The number of spaces that are required is significantly lessened. We've also removed the parking along the front entrance loop off of Clover, and we've removed the 10,000 square foot addition. Uh, so there's, uh, we've gone from approximately I think 18,000 square feet of proposed new impervious to just over 7,500 square feet on the five acre parcel. So we're significantly reducing the additional impervious. We are proposing uh, to potentially bank some of the spaces depending on identified tenants and uses. Uh, but this is a uh, code compliant plan from a parking standpoint. Uh, we are lessening the amount of impervious added to the rear yard so that we were below the existing non-conforming uh, limit and it's removed one of the variances that we were proposing uh, for the project, the only area variance that we were proposing for the project. And then in addition, all of the trees to the front yards being Highland Ave and Clover have uh, been retained. Uh, we did hear from some neighbors specifically, our neighbor immediately to the west on Highland Avenue requesting that some of those larger silver maples be left and uh, some of the calorie pairs out to the front as well. So we're removing a couple of smaller pines that are in poor condition within the parking lot proper. But other than that, we're not removing any uh, additional trees and we're planting quite a few, which is down, I think two more pages, maybe three more pages in the set on the landscaping plan. And we're just proposing to add a couple of flowering trees within the parking lot there it is right there, yep, for some decorative, some uh, junipers out near the front to screen some of the parking out to the Highland front yard and the dumpster, which is remaining close to its existing location. Some pines and shade trees uh, to the south side where we're taking out some overgrown screening material. And then, as I mentioned, just some uh, crab apple and um, columnar style maples within the parking lot itself to add some landscaping islands within the new fields. Uh, so that kind of summarizes the changes. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have with it. All right, questions, anyone? Comments? Well, we're certainly glad to see more trees stay. That's uh, never an issue. Yeah, I think it looks good. I mean, that was those are a couple of things that came up when we talked about it last time was a concern related to the property on the west. Um, but to have extra screening on the property on the south is probably beneficial. And, you know, the, the ratio of trees to, to, to building and parking area has gone up, which, you know, is hard, hard not to be happy about from the standpoint of the conservation board. It looks nice. I agree. Do you have any comments at this point going back to the planning board um, that you support this particular iteration of the plans? I think I'm hearing that we do support this. Okay. There were a couple you know, um, comments that we had from the September meeting um, talking about the sidewalk along Clover Street that needed to be uh, repaired, not removed. Um, there was uh, incorporate the green infrastructure techniques. Matt, can you just touch on that a little bit? Are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the reminder on the sidewalk, Rick. So originally, the sidewalk along Clover, we were proposing to remove uh, as part of our upgrades to the front loop because it doesn't lead anywhere; just dead ends at the south end of this property. There are some areas on it that are in poor condition, but it's within the right of way and do the removal of a lot of the work at the front. We're just proposing to leave that sidewalk just the way that it is now. If it becomes a maintenance is issue in the future, we may uh, address it at that point, um, but we're not proposing any work there. And then from a green infrastructure standpoint, uh, we did do some infiltration testing. So we are looking to uh, 
address storm water as best as we can on the site. There is no existing drainage system on the property. Right now it just all sheet drains to the low area at the southeast corner. Um, there is some good infiltration soils up at the front area. So if we can direct some of the reworked asphalt pavement to that area and some of the roof goes there now, that will help. And then the tree planting is really how we are addressing some of the uh, new pavement areas. There won't be curb there, so that'll allow contributing area to go to those uh, tree and plant locations to take advantage of infiltration anywhere that we can. Other comment? Yes, Mitch, do you have a comment? I think that those improvements are, are sound fair and reasonable and uh, address the issues that we were talking about. I think it's I think it's important the fact that they've really removed a lot of the you know the, the ten thousand square foot addition and a lot of the parking that would have been associated with that addition um, makes this plan um, mm -hmm. much much more um, favorable, and we can pass that on to the planning board. All right. I guess that's it then. Okay, thank you everyone. Appreciate your time tonight. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we will uh, go on to the uh, application 1950 to 1966 Monroe Avenue LLC concept review. So, oh, good evening, Christine. It's good to see you there. Sorry to arrive late, but looks like you guys are moving right along. <laughs> we are, indeed. So uh, this is to redevelop an existing non-conforming gas station, an auto repair facility, and change it into a convenience store with gasoline sales. So. Uh, it appears then that the service section will be removed uh, and discontinued. And this will be more like a 7-Eleven. And I think as uh, we move increasingly toward electric cars, this makes more sense than ever to uh, stop emphasizing uh, repairs on fossil fuel vehicles. Uh, comments on this, or we have, uh, we have we, uh, John Taraba here to present it for us. All right, good. Please do. Uh, good, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? All right. Yes. Well, and members of the board, my name is John Sharaba. I'm re representing the application this evening. I'm with Land Tech Surveying and Planning. Also online is Lou Terranoli and Ken Pirelli that are with Quickly's and can answer any questions you might have regarding the operation. Good. But as uh, the chairman pointed out, this is a redevelopment project. And what we're trying to do is give uh, the planning board uh, three scenarios that we are comfortable uh, with for redeveloping this corner. So it doesn't have a lot of the meat and potatoes that you normally see in detail. Uh, so we're really in the initial stages of planning, but the issues that are ahead of us are significant. So we wanna see what the planning board likes. So- Can I just pause you there for a second, John? Sure. Uh, Brett, could you uh, bring up that application for us, please? Thank you. So this project contains two properties. One is the mobile station that everyone's familiar with and the other building, uh, the other is the uh, house that's immediately to the south. So quickly, has that's owned this where the beauty, that's the one where the beauty shop is now correct correct okay thank you yep uh, quickly purchased this property last year and is in operation of the of the property so we are they are familiar with uh they are the owner and applicant so i just want to point that out so concept one is leaving the existing building service station in place, raising the, the, the existing hair salon building and installing a new parking lot um, to the south of the building. This is option one. This is the least obtrusive, um, you know, leaving the building there 
Um, obviously, there'd be numerous renovations and things to the building. Um, we are showing new parking, we're showing outdoor seating, and really just kind of working with the, the bones of the building as it is and retooling the site. That's really what option one is. So it's, it's uh, the least amount of development costs, um, but it's not gonna change the corner too much. Option two, if you can go to that, is um, taking both buildings down and installing a new 2,700 square foot building near the south property line, basically where the hair salon building is now, um, updating the parking lot, canopy, um, and proposing green areas and uh, things such as that, opportunities for landscaping. Uh, we're also proposing closing curb cuts and things like that on both Monroe and Elmwood. This, uh, this is kind of the direction that we'd like to go. Um, and uh, again, there's a lot more elements to the plan that would come in the future, but this is really, you know, our goal. And uh, one unique thing that you might see is we're not proposing any drive-through turnarounds. Most of the quickly stores, if you're familiar with them around town, uh, have drive-throughs. Well, we're not really trying to take a crack at that here at this intersection. And we know this is uh, the biggest intersection in town, obviously. So this plan, um, you know, we've left a lot of green space at the intersection so we can do things with their benches and really come up with a really unique landscape plan. And uh, that's really what this plan represents. Option three is kind of like, a, we call it a new urbanism plan, taking the building and pushing it up front to the corner and, uh, and then putting the parking and the, and the canopy in the back. This uh, again, allows opportunities for landscaping at the intersection. Um, there are some challenges for us on this operationally that we have a building with two fronts, um, you know, things like coolers and things like that that work within the building become more difficult and problematic. This, uh, this has merit and what we wanna do it offers landscaping opportunities and things like that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really provide the, the, the board with a much of a, you know, what the building's gonna look like. We're still working on that, but we're, we're very flexible with the architecture. Um, but this is our option three. So this is really what we're proposing to the planning board because you can see all these options have uh, different levels of engineering and things that need to happen. So we're looking for a clear direction moving forward. Rick thought it'd be a great idea to come to you, um, the conservation board real early and get your thoughts and, uh, is, and incorporate those thoughts and explain those thoughts to the planning board when, when we meet with them as well. So that's a quick overview. <laughs> a very sensible approach. Let's, yeah. uh, let's hear some comments from the board. So um, thank you for, for giving us these, these options and this overview. You know, my, my first reaction is that option three seems to provide the, as you say, it's sort of new urbanism. When I think about using this space and the middle schoolers and high schoolers who, who go there, I, I feel like having the, the flow of traffic behind the building and away from the corner um, has a lot of benefits, both environmental and um, sort of quality of life as well. So um, I can appreciate, I hadn't thought about what you said about having the two access points to the building and how that makes it more complicated from an engineering standpoint, but I think from a from a design standpoint, that to me is is certainly um, the one that I think would add the most to the twelve corners experience. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm inclined to favor that idea as well. You know, the whole new urban new urbanism approach is is very appealing for a lot of reasons and and would make a, make huge strides in terms of changing the, the use and feel and some of the hazards associated with that property in terms of people you know driving in and out of it. Um, the only question I was wondering is that you know, would there be issues given that it's a weird sort of pie-shaped corner um, with sight lines? I mean I, I didn't I haven't gone there and like actually paste it out as far as the distance. Um, would there be problems with that? And I guess that's you know more a question for Rick than anybody else. Because if, if there wouldn't be, then I think that I'm, I'm with you. But that, that was my only reservation. 
Mm -hmm. uh, George, that would be one of the, the engineering um, aspects that would be studied uh, quite a bit if this particular proposal would move forward. Again, we're in the conceptual stage here. So that this idea could also be tweaked in the future if this was the preferred concept going forward. Okay, I see. Rick, may I comment real quick? This is Ken Pirelli with Quickly's. Sure, yes, Ken. Please. Yeah. So thank you again, and I appreciate uh, you know John giving you the overview a little bit from Quickly. Please on the operational side, um, you know we're in in full agreement that the best options for the corner are really a complete uh, rebuild, relocating the building, relocating the canopy. Obviously, we've provided you know some options, two options, a kind of a new urbanism and then more traditional. Um, both of the, one thing that I just want to um, point out is both of those make significant improvements to the safety of the corner. Uh, I'm a I'm a longtime resident of the um, Brighton area. Uh, I grew up actually down on Harvard Street off Culver, but everything I I did as a child was um, at Brighton. Um, I went to McQuaid, so I'm. Grew up in this area, and I'm I'm very um, you know attached to the to the corner of the project, um, and certainly safety and walkability were two of our the primary um, kind of design influences. Um, both option two and option three make some significant impacts to safety that I just want to point out. Number one, if you look at the um, you know, existing conditions. There's asphalt that from the parking lot that touches the sidewalk. There's four curb cuts that enter this property. Um, some, two of them very, very close to, a, you know, a, El, to a Elmwood and Monroe Ave intersection, very close. Um, that area has been, that pie-shaped area, kind of the, the sharp point is, has historically been a, uh, a center for dilapidated or, you know, dysfunctional vehicles. Uh, certainly, you know, we've removed those already as we're not a service station anymore, but um, having, you know, the first thing that I think about having, you know, been in that area and at that school so much is, is the kids walking across and their access to the building. Um, and, and like I said, both of these provide immediate access points with the sidewalks that we're proposing and how they tie into the sidewalks on Elmwood and Monroe Avenue. Um, again, we're showing in all of an, an option two and option three, putting green space between buildings, between um, parking lots and um, that don't currently exist. So, you know, we feel like that's really a strong, um, you know, consideration that has to be looked at when addressing redevelopment of this corner. I would agree. Um, George made a, a good comment about sightline, I believe. And honestly, with any urban design, my, my concern is sightline with the building kind of blocking um, the view of cars coming in and out and, and pedestrians coming in and out. So I think there's a little bit of a challenge with the urban design, although I know that that's strongly desired in a lot of um, you know, developing communities to have a, an urban approach. So I think from an operational standpoint, which is why we kind of favor option two, you know, Quickly's does, it, I, it always opens up the sight line to have the canopy on the corner and the building, what I would say to the back of the property instead of the building on the corner. Uh, th this, this project does, or this corner specifically does lend to a safer urban plan in that the majority of the traffic that we're gonna have entering this site from, from Monroe Ave is gonna be traveling westbound and actually sees the canopy first. So, you know, there are some, the sight lines important, but when we think about Monroe Ave traffic, they're not gonna be crossing the turn lane and double lane. In fact, that's not really an option there. So it, it significantly decreases the sight line concern. Um, Obviously, traffic coming from Elmwood would be turning right into the parking lot, but I, I think that's the, um, I think from a traffic standpoint, that's the less concerning um, 
street, Elmwood Avenue, and the traffic heading eastbound that would be pulling in there. So I just wanted to point out that we, you know, strongly took into consideration safety um, and, and that our plan will take into consideration all of those things, access points, the walkability, the space and, um, you know, the distance from parking and drive lanes from the actual sidewalk itself that exists on Monroe Avenue. So I appreciate, you know, the, you guys giving me the opportunity to kind of explain why we came up with um, these additional two redevelopment plans rather than, you know, and I know John mentioned, obviously the less costly approach would be to leave a lot of things as they are, but that's not really our objective here. This is not a, a cost saving exercise. This is to put the best plan that the community is in favor of and that works for us operationally in front of everybody and, and move forward with, with that plan. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that um, explanation. Um, I'm wondering, um, well, first of all, I appreciate that this is very much in line with the um, comprehensive plan um, and the uh, kind of densifying the 12 corners area. Um, question about, um, oh, about bicycle facilities, bicycle parking there, is that in uh, a part of the plan? And where would they be located uh, in any one of these scenarios? Um, this is John Sharaba. So bicycle racks are, are incorporated in all of our more densified um, sites. Uh, Fairport particularly, we have a, a bicycle rack. Um, we haven't, again, the level of detail, we haven't got into that, but it will be, you know, added in future plans. So I, I, I you know, looking at the, the there's so many varying options, we have a lot of room that we can put a bicycle rack in and it'll be adjacent to the building. And hopefully prominently placed. Now, I, we have some uh, racks in our commercial areas that are tucked off in the back near a dumpster, not necessarily inviting. Um, well, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of speak at uh, Fairport. We have a bike rack that kind of took great uh, amount of time and detail. It's actually in the shape of a queue and uh, it will be very prominent. So it's a, it's an element that kind of is very kind of near and dear to your heart. So we'll yeah, I, I mean, I had it custom designed for the village of Fairport location specifically when we were we, when we redeveloped that site about a year and a half ago. I mean, same thing. It was a, a site that you had to walk across a parking lot to get into the building in on the corner of East Street and 250. This is a, a walk. That's a walking community. And, and honestly, we want to invite that traffic, that walking traffic. Um, we don't have a ton of parking here, so we need our customer base to feel comfortable walking or riding their bikes. Um, I personally can picture a bike rack and, and in Fairport, we put it close to the outdoor patio section um, where again, it's custom designed and fabricated. So we kind of think it's a feature, almost a, a design element, not something to be hidden, but to be, you know, put on display. So I could see it, you know, somehow connecting to the patio section We'll have to play around with that a little bit. We don't necessarily want them riding bikes on the patio. And they also, once they park the bike, need an easy entrance point to the sidewalk to walk into the building. So again, a lot of design things that need to be worked out with, especially the urban um, plan or option three, just because this is a little bit unfamiliar to us, but we certainly want to investigate that. That's why we're here um, and you know, in front of you guys, even ahead of the planning board to really, um, you know, get the temperature, see what's important to all the, you know, um, boards that are going to be involved in this process. And, um, but yes, I mean, uh, the short answer is we, we will absolutely be looking for the most appropriate spot for, you know, bicycle racks and, and not have it hidden by the dumpster. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Can I see plan two again, just to compare to plan three? What's not shown on this plan two is the potential outdoor seating area, which would really be on that southeast corner um, after the sidewalk. Again, there could be some outdoor seating where the bike racks incorporated into that. And that actually flows a little bit better for creating that space. Um, you know, but again, this is more of a traditional uh, layout. Mr. Chairman, this is Lieutenant Only. Can I uh, please follow up on Ken's comments? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I'm director of real estate for Quickly's, and I just wanted to add that uh, the outdoor seating is something that we are working uh, very diligently on to have at, at this site, but I just want to emphasize uh, to the board that when we do place that outdoor seating, we will place the appropriate decorative barriers and fencing so we control uh, mostly for safety. Uh, we, we, we want the pedestrian access to, to enter at, at very few points, uh, especially with uh, this being up at the intersection, we'll, we'll have a very decorative uh, barriers and fencing to provide the maximum protection for, for the customers and the residents as they sit on the patio, especially families coming with young children. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of quick questions. This is David. Uh, yep. Looks like there's going to, there's three gas pumps now. So you'll have the same number of gas pumps in either one of these plans. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Yep. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I've been buying gas there for uh, years. I used to have car service there, but not anymore since the last mechanic left. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I also have a quick question. Sorry. On, on option three. Um, it looked like at the southern end there was a, a charging station. Is that something that is is that on your property or is that? Well, that's that? what it's something we were thinking about. You know, we, we know that this world is always gas, but there might be opportunities. Um, I know Ken's talked about this in the past of uh, having something like that. So we just want to just show you that we are thinking um, uh -huh. in that regard. But you know, we might have an electrical charging station on this site at some time, but. That's really so, what it is. Okay. so to expand on that a little bit, currently what we've done in our most recent build, we, we take the necessary steps to lay the infrastructure down. So the conduit, the piping, we identify the spot, we cap that off. Unfortunately, from a retail perspective, there aren't a lot of options available yet for rapid charging. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, most, even like the Tesla, um, charging stations, those are long, they're, they're more at office complexes, places where your car is gonna be parked for a, a lengthy period of time. I wouldn't expect someone to pull up and have their car charged while they're inside buying an ice cream or, or a soda. That's not, we're not quite at that um, mm -hmm. you know, development stage yet. But as EV, you know, every day we read more about EV, yeah. we as operators are very conscious of, of the advancement of EV and are gonna take steps necessary so that we're not tearing up a site when those options do become available for us to, to have at a retail location, kind of a quick serve retail location. Mm -hmm. um, so that, again, as John says, it, it, it wants, we, we put it on a plan because we want you to see that we are conscious and thinking about that um, as, as necessary um, additions in the future. Mm -hmm. Great. I was, I was happy to see it. And if you, if, if you somehow don't, you know, if you go with a different plan, I would encourage you to put that in whatever plan you, you work with. I didn't notice it on option two. So um, I just think it's good to see. So thank you for thinking forwardly on that. Yeah, obviously, as I, you noted, this is, this is the way things are going and uh, there will be fast charge and um, I'm sure you don't want to be left out. Absolutely. Related to um, the way things are going with um, vehicles, um, I have questions about the building. Um, assuming you are um, going with the new build, um, are there green elements in the um, plans for in the design of the building? I, mean, I wouldn't anticipate necessarily that you're aiming for LEED certification in a quick lease location, but there are um, elements of uh, green energy, green materials um, that could be incorporated. Is that, uh, does that figure into your planning at all? Um, I don't know, John, if you can have, or Lou want to touch on that. I mean, it's not something that we, we have to, well, we build with, So C stores, high traffic, high use. I mean, we have to build with certain materials that are that are resistant to the wear and tear that a lot of other materials are. Um, you know, we definitely use very high quality materials, natural stones. We use um, kind of the hardy plank, cement, fiberboard. 
but I don't know for for certain. I can't say. I mean, we can certainly look into that. What other green, um, you know, green material would be applicable to such a high traffic, high volume location? Yeah, I would say to follow up with Ken that that we'd certainly educate ourselves into that. We are. <clears throat> Uh, we, uh, whether we do uh, plan two or three, uh, starting a building from scratch, as far as the, the design and the architecture and all that. So we'll get with the, the people that are experts in that and we'll, we'll, we'll see how far of a direction we could go. We're certainly open to what makes sense. And as far as what Ken says about, you know, being a high traffic site, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to balance those and to bring some elements to the table that make some sense. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, Following on that, somewhat related, um, in demolishing the building um, behind, is there any intention of um, diverting any of the um, the refuse from the the uh, uh, refuse stream? Um, any uh, redirecting to um, say rehouse, restore? Um, certainly, some projects would reincorporate the materials in the new build, but that would, again, probably not fit with your corporate design. Uh, but is there a way to keep those materials from heading straight to landfill? Well, Ken, I think this is uh, the first, we've, we've uh, raised other structures on, on projects. This is the first kind of residential home that is gonna be uh, raised. So I think there is opportunity to, like you mentioned, rehouse uh, so elements, doors, things like that. So I think, you know, um, Ken's boss is a pretty savvy businessman. So that'd probably be an option that looked at to, you know, see if some of those can be, um, uh, you know, salvaged and, and sold off or, do or donated in some capacity. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the elements within the house are, are salvageable. You know, it is a house that was converted into numerous businesses. So who knows if there's any period elements in there. So, but we'll look into that. And, you know, just as far as, you know, green practices, you know, the, the, there's architectural elements, but we are going to be, you know, have to adhere to the town code for stormwater and green practices will be incorporated at the site level. So uh, those will be on future plans um, to make sure we meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Do we have uh, more questions and comments from the board? Yeah, this is David again, looking at the sight lines for entrance and exit. Uh, I, you, you seem pretty confident that people will have a clear sight lines to get in and get out. I know when I go into the existing place, I'm generally coming, um, driving west on Elmwood a little bit, pull in and get gas and pull out uh, heading east on Elmwood. And you really have to watch for traffic. There's a lot there, but that was a uh, complicated intersections. So right now it's all pretty open there, but I guess with the building, it's going to block some of that visibility until you're actually out near the uh, either Elmwood or Monroe uh, exits. That's an observation I have. Yeah, I was looking at that also. I think that um, it's, it's sort of an interesting question because I think you, at the same time, you gain by having the curb cuts moved further away from the actual intersection and being somewhat smaller. So, um, you know, like, like I said, the, those were, that was a question I had as well, but the, um, in terms of making the whole intersection or this corner of the intersection more uh, pedestrian, pedestrian friendly, this option three really does seem like it's the way to go. And I'll jump onto that, George, and point out too that buildings um, up closer to the, um, the curb, up closer to the, the sidewalk, up, up closer to the street, um, act as traffic calming measures themselves. Correct. So even if the sight line is somewhat modified, you know, you don't have that clear swath of view through um, an open parking lot, you are um, signaled to slow, to be more attentive to what's coming up. Um, and that in combination with where the, the um, curb cuts are planned, at least in site three that we're looking at right now, um, should be, um, it should be safer, should be should should enhance the, the traffic safety at the corner more than it might um, complicate it. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. 
So just, uh, this is John Sharaba, just so the board knows, these options have been submitted not only to the town, but also to uh, the Monroe County DOT. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't submitted to uh, the state DOT yet, but the, the county's very active in their review process. So we wanna make sure we get them on board as sooner than later. So uh, we'll, we'll wait to hear from them. I, 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 I'm sure that they're gonna want some kind of traffic study. I know the planning board will. Um, so again, that's just letting you know that you know, we're kind of ahead of the game here. Good. John, I'm curious, I can't see based on what's on the screen right now, um, but on the Elmwood Avenue side, do you, can you, t oh, I guess it won't show it. Can you tell me where that curb cut aligns in relation to the entrance into 12 Corners Plaza? Oh, I really can't tell you based on this, but I think it's, uh, I don't have another plan with me. Or an aerial. John, was there an aerial in our application? I feel there, there might have been. been. <clears throat> yeah, there was an. Where we might be able to see if we. Yeah, there's an aerial in our application. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Well, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think our, you know, it's, there's two entrances across the street there. Um, so we're going to be, I don't know, exactly lined up with them. But, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty close to lined up with the the plaza. Mm -hmm. It won't be closer to the corner. <clears throat> All right. So I can see that being um, a point of concern um, with the county DOT, um, regardless of how you line it up. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't, I don't know if we foresee a lot of people going directly across the street, <laughs> you know, hopefully they're going to take a, a right out of here at Elmwood. There's always someone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I understand. Additional uh, comments or concerns? So if we could just kind of do a, a summary yeah. Please, uh, for right. our... Um, comments going back to the planning board. Um, I kind of get the impression that the board preferred option would be three, followed by two, followed by one. Yes. And that we definitely want to, you know, um, encourage additional green space, um, walkability, um, favorable for bicycle traffic, use of um, green infrastructure techniques, including green building practices, if, if possible. Is there other things that you want to pass along that I've missed? Yep. Or any board members? I think you've got it, Rick. I guess the one other thing that had come up was was the potential, the prospective charging station in all of the options. I think it's only currently shown in option three. Okay. All right, are we, are we done with these guys? We are. Thanks guys. Yeah, Thank thanks for the time everyone. this evening. Thank you. Yep. Thank bye -bye. you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have an EMC report? Yep. Uh, the last meeting was canceled. Okay. <laughs> Green report. I just wanted to um, make sure everybody knew it that. Um, the Climate Solutions Accelerator, formerly RPCC, is, is sponsoring a 22 days of climate justice, April 1st through 22nd, modeled on the 21 day racial equity challenge. Um, if you go to their website, you can sign up and, and I know they'll have, I think four, uh, four live panels um, once a week on, during that event, but you know they're encouraging people to participate in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the name of that organiza organization again, please? So it, it was Rochester People's Climate Coalition. They're now mm -hmm. the Climate Solutions Accelerator of the 
Finger Lakes region. Um, I'll put their website into the chat if you'd like. Okay, uh, thanks. Sure. All right, uh, new business. Uh, I know you have some uh, handouts, George. Or you were uh, talking about information handouts. Yes, um, I can. I can explain briefly if you if you like. Please. The I I, I pulled together some materials that the other board members might find might might not know about and might find interesting. <coughs> related to uh, what the state is doing currently related to urban and community forestry, um, because it ties into some of the stuff we've talked about related to doing a tree inventory, which then would make us eligible for funding for doing more of, of any of these sorts of things. The, um, the, the overall, um, so, so that's, that's the gist of what I sort of gave you excerpted. There's a little bit more than related to some of the um, like with Yale Environment 360, and there, there are some other um, initiatives. And uh, New York City actually has, has done quite well in terms of um, developing a, a, an urban forestry plan that in many ways, you know, we, we, we would do well to simply try to model. Um, they have a rather extensive tree inventory. The, the one thing that represents a little bit of a shift, which I, I sort of sense that as a, as a board, we're, we're like somewhere in the middle on this one, perhaps as well ourselves, is that um, there, there's this concept that's been out there for probably less than 10 years of novel ecosystems. So looking at human impacted ecosystems in terms of their function. And one aspect of this is the extent to which um, non-native and invasive species are sometimes accepted or utilized on purpose because of their suitability to that location. It's an interesting question. In the United States, the, the experts on whether or not this is a good idea, that the experts seem to be rather divided. In, um, in many other countries, this has been simply accepted as, as more of the way things should go. Um, so, I guess I would ask you also to, to consider those questions as well. You know, the degree to which um, non-native but otherwise naturalized species, you know, you know maybe, maybe are okay. Um, I, I think that there would be some advantages to doing that as we look ahead at tree inventorying and tree planting in the terms of um, one of the things that we do run into sometimes is a problem of not having um, always native species that are suitable to the types of conditions that we're looking to um, plant them in. And one of the particular problems that we have, for instance, is the fact that you were, you know, maples of all types are overrepresented and um, sugar maples are probably not well suited to an urban environment in a warming world. Um, you know, and that, that happens to be one of our signature species that we try you know, oftentimes unsuccessfully to get established. So, so looking a little bit ahead, so, so that's, that's part of the, where, where that, you know, the, the, what to consider is not just anything, but what are um, species that, that are not native or maybe not um, so common in this area, but if you're looking at things that are gonna be around for a number of decades, you know, you know global warming world, you know, what, what are the things that you maybe look to incorporate into the uh, tree planting plan? Mm -hmm. So, so, so this just overall, this is, this is some of the reading and I thought that I, you know, to the extent that you're interested and have the time that I try to share some of these things with you. Thank you. Right. So no, no formal proposal of any sort, just to yeah. try to provide okay. information. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Yeah, thank you for uh, keeping us informed on that. Uh, do we have old business? There, there sort of are a couple of things related to old business as well, um, sort of in the same vein. Um, we, we have four, um, because of COVID and not having any large event, we have actually four Arbor Day um, tree planting events scheduled now with, uh, at, at Buckland Park with Brighton Recreation. Um, and these would be the April's, you know, depending, it, it just, just be a you know, small two hour thing um, 
but uh, the April 10th weekend, 17th, 24th, and May 1st. Um, this is in conjunction with Brighton Rotary that wants to plant 200 trees. So they're, they're anteing up the, the money for the trees and also for the protection materials to prevent, protect the trees um, in all of these locations against deer damage and in many of the locations against mower and trimmer damage as well. The trees need a lot of protection. Um, and then um, I have then moved on to the next project, which is uh, working with Becky Cotter about scheduling through Brighton Rec a couple of training sessions, community training sessions. Um, also Saturday or Sunday, depending on the weather, um, May 15th weekend and May 22nd weekend related to tree inventory. And I have the materials at this point to be able to you know, accommodate it, you know, like a dozen people at each of those two training sessions. So I think we'll get this going. You know, plus, plus I'll have my kids at school do some of this as well. But I think we'll get this going this spring. Good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. George, that's great. I just wanted to ask for the April dates, do people need to sign up in advance so you make sure numbers are okay? Or is it because we're outdoors in the park, you can just show up? Well, part of the reason for so far, what I've done is, you know, just, just, you know, you know, th those of you, including you, um, who are on the, this email list who have been showing up on and sort of as, as needed, you know, as opportunity presents basis for doing some of the tree maintenance and protection work over at Buckland Park. Um, my, my initial thought was to, you know, not go much beyond that. The, the town is not really interested in having this be a like more, more widely publicized event just because of the concerns related to numbers and crowding. Yeah. So, you know- So, we can, so we, can, we can go one degree out to let people know about it, but we won't broadcast it um, right, right. more it's widely then. Be, it's not gonna be, you know, broadly publicized um, okay. by the town. Yeah, so, so okay. we can, you know, we can certainly encourage people, but, but you know, not, not to take it at that next step. Now, if the COVID restrictions are eased, then, you know, we, we could do that. Um, and uh, instead of being a two hour event, it might be more like a 45 minute event because a lot of people can find a lot of things <laughs> fast, but, but um, th that's, that, that's where it stands now. Especially if it's Thanks. snowing really hard, you're incentivized to plant fast. <laughs> yes, we've been there. <laughs> My daughter still hasn't recovered, and that's been two years. <laughs> yeah, she was one of the hardy ones. That's great. Uh, do we have any more new or old business or things we'd like to discuss? No? All right. Well, we'll move on to the uh, Lone Tree Review, which uh, was pretty handy to have it uh, right near the, right at 12 corners. And... Uh, I'm, uh, let's see, Susan and Mitch. Um, I looked at it as long as I was going over to look at the service station proposal also. It's a pretty sick tree. It's pretty dead. Yeah. So do we uh, have any uh, objections to having it removed? Or are we prepared to take the arborist recommendation? Yeah, yep. it should be removed. Yeah. Not sure about replacement, but definitely removed. Yes, I wouldn't park my car under it. <laughs> did they suggest a replacement, do you remember? I think they did. Yeah. They did. I mean, there's certainly room over there for a tree, even mm -hmm. not in that exact place. So well, you're in agreement that they, we, should, we should replace it? Susan, you look at it all the time, look out your front door and you see it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When they, when we can, we should replace it. All right. Remove and replace. So uh, any last words from any of you? So to speak. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for your service and uh, all you've contributed to this meeting. And uh, April 13th will be our next meeting. Five weeks off. Enjoy. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. See you, everybody. Thank you guys. See you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.